What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing gentleman by the name of Peter Koshland of FarmD. Peter, what's going on, brother? How are you? Hey, Jay. Good. Doing great. Great to be with you. It's awesome to have you here today. So you guys, let me give you guys Peter's bio. Uh, He's a great guest to talk to you about because he is an owner of a compounding pharmacy, which I am always speaking about openly and a lot of the things I do and with the people that I speak with. But uh, he is, he opened FarmD in 2009, which is Koshlin Farm in San Francisco, which is where he is right now on this podcast, the wonder of the internet. And works with doctors and patients on individualized integrative therapies that make a difference, of course, in the quality of patients' day-to-day lives. Peter has seen a profound impact that high-quality compounded medicine can have. So producing the absolute best patient outcomes is what drives his decisions as the CEO of Koshlin Farm. Uh, When he is not in the pharmacy, Peter spends his time consulting with and educating doctors. As I told Peter off the air, it's like herding cats about the multiple applications of compounded medicine in their respective fields. Uh, funny footnote to that, um, you know, when I first started lecturing and talking to people and working with doctors, you know, pro- about what, seven or eight years ago, I remember going to one of the booths at uh, A4M, you know, the big conference at, at end of year every year in Vegas uh, for, you know, A4M. Um, and I just remember the doctors coming up to one of the booths. I will refuse to name this compounding pharmacy for the purposes of this discussion, but I was, you know, a guest of the booth. And I was mind blown at how they were asking questions, but yet still prescribing these, you know, peptides and hormones and all these other things. And they had like a understanding that I would consider second or third grade level. So it was, it was very eye opening for me to see like how this works. Right. So it's like, I say that because it's, it's proof that, you know, someone like you and obviously the people that work for you from an educational standpoint, you know, it's critically important to train physicians on understanding like how medicines work on, you know, yeah. the, 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 the difference between, you know, compounded medicines versus, you know, the stuff coming from big pharma, and, you know, and, you know, I think, you know, this, and I'm going to let you talk here in a second, but like, it's mind blowing to, to, to really witness or to recognize, or to even just learn that the clinical community really doesn't actually understand for the most part, the harm that a lot of the, again, pharmaceutical preparations have with GMO, you know, particulates and just all these other things that are in these medications that you guys aren't, you know, obviously you guys create them at a, at a at, in my opinion, a, in a much better uh, way. And obviously, uh, you know, take great caution in that and precaution in that, but it's, it's kind of mind blowing, but anyway, I'll switch to you. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's really interesting you bring that up because I call it paint by numbers medicine. And I, I kind of feel like I've bridged both worlds. I got very traditional medical training and then kind of went out in the world. And I was an uh, idealistic guy and I wanted to go help people get well and, you know, kind of believed in, sure. you know, a service oriented profession. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until a few years in my career that I realized that, you know, I, you know, some of the stuff that they were teaching me just didn't pan out. Like people weren't getting well. And, <laughs> And even some of the evidence that was being presented to me or 
I should say the lack of evidence. We were told, you know, you should be doing this. And then when I went and said, like, where's where's the evidence to support that? It wasn't there. This was just kind of dogma. And so it was a very eye opening experience. And to your earlier statement, I think that's right on the money, because I always say, you know, understanding of physiology is a legitimate process for determining what's best for a patient. You know, we, we, we oh, what does the double blind placebo control clinical trial say? So I can not have to think about it. But reality is every patient's going to come up with their own complex physiology. Exactly. And if I have an understanding of what I'm doing and how that's going to impact their patients, you know, you know, we do a lot of work in hormones and this is really true. I can make really good decisions because I know what's going to happen and I know what I want to have happen. And if it doesn't go the way I want to, I can start to think about why not. And I can use my brain you know, to like work through all that process. So it's a really, it's, it's a lost art, I think in medicine and, and it's still a really legitimate way to make patients get well. And that at right. the end of the day, that's what we should be thinking about. Right. And so yeah. once you start doing that and you get some success, you think, Oh, this is pretty cool. This is actually working. And my patients are sending me thank you letters in the mail because they feel better than they felt in 20 years because we just uncovered a few things that just weren't being addressed because they were getting the paint by numbers medicine. <laughs> so I know. I love that. I'm going to actually borrow that from you as I move forward and talk about that because I've got them all right. I've got sick care, illness medicine. I mean, I have a whole lecture of statements that I use, but I like that paint by numbers medicine. But before we get into your talking points, this this brings it really actually begs a deeper discussion because the truth is, along with studies, and I wrote this in my book, which is now old in 2019, uh, fully optimized life. But studies are worthless, right? Like if you look at all studies, not one could ever be replicated, right? There's so much inter inter individual bio, uh, you know, individuality. There's the biochemical uniqueness. There's the aspect of you know, uh, compromised patient population group cohorts. And then, as you know, they rarely do studies on healthy people. So it's like when you really look, and and, and by the way, what does that even define? What is a normal or healthy person according to medicine, right? But I mean, the reality is, is that every, as you said, every person is unique and you have to treat the patient not in any kind of cookie cutter templatized way. And I think sadly, and again, without disparaging doctors, because I could, um, you know, they're up against it too, because of insurance, you know, they've got the time issues mm-hmm. when they see patients, they can't really get into full, you know, discovery. It's a five or six minute, seven minute, you know, again, I'm talking about insurance and managed care and PPO and stuff like that, but they don't really have the time, you know, to truly investigate the, that individual patient. And so it's gotten out of hand, but, you know, to, to, to kind of segue into what we're going to talk about at one of your first uh, discussion points is, you know, just hormone optimization. I don't even like a call and replacement, right? Because it's getting worse and worse and worse, as you know, now with people's hormones are cessating earlier, the environmental onslaught, the siege of all the chemicals in our environment. But uh, can you talk a little bit about that? And let me set you up. Just recently, a good physician friend of mine told me that there is an issue right now in compounding with testosterone creams, the transdermal creams that they're testing them when they're coming from the various compounders and they're not holding standard to label claims. <laughs> so, 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 you know, in the bigger picture of this point, like what are you seeing right now as an owner and CEO of a compounding pharmacy across the board with, uh, with, with other compounding pharmacies? I mean, since COVID, I mean, obviously today is February 17th, 2022 for the timestamp. Do you think standards are lagging or are people slacking at compounding <sighs> pharmacies? I mean, like what is happening right now? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Certainly, a compounding pharmacy can make an excellent product that rivals anything that's manufactured, but they have to be dedicated to the quality. And I think that's always a little bit of the conversation we have with doctors in the sense that like you you do want to vet your compounding pharmacy a little bit. And I could go, you know, we we do a thousand things at my pharmacy to ensure quality, but there's a couple of biggies, like where do you source your chemicals and what kind of testing do you do on your finished products? And can I come see your lab? You know, because just walking into a lab will give you a lot of idea about the quality assurance. So there is variability out there. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's considered the Wild West by some of the regulators. And it's really up to the practitioner to do a little bit more due diligence on who they work with. And so our selling point to our doctors is, hey, listen, we have quality is number one. Like we've put everything possible into like quality assurance come and see our lab, come ask me as many questions as you want. And then you don't have to worry about that on the back end. 
So and it's, what's interesting is that we see that from the patient perspective and kind of going back to like the patient outcome piece of it, quality, you know, if, you, if you're really dedicated to getting patients well, you got to have quality. So, you know, th just that that's the foundation to all of this and then the quality stacks on top of it. But yeah, I mean, there's no reason to think that just because it's compounded, it's poor quality, not at all. I mean, some of the stuff we put out there is, is really excellent and we have a lot of really interesting and sophisticated tools to deliver a really good testosterone product, for example, that's really sure. going to help people. So uh, it's just a matter of kind of knowing who you're working with and making sure that, you know, it's it's all really, really at the, at the highest level. So, 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 cause I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to quote a criteria you here. Like, would you then say that all compounding pharmacies are not created equal? And, and obviously look, I'm pro compounding pharmacy. I wouldn't even be able to do what I'm doing right now if there weren't compounding pharmacies. And as you and I get through this podcast, we will probably talk about the threats to that whole thing with the FDA and everything, but I'm a huge proponent, but how does the patient as the end user safeguard their, you know, uh, expectation from a standpoint of like, how do they know that what they're getting is, you know, holding to label claims, meaning is there a place that they could send the product to, to independently test it? Because again, that's what the doctor was telling me is he was like, and again, I'm not going to mention names, but this is a big compounding pharmacy. And there are now like a lot of patients are claiming that their testosterone creams are less. And again, you got patients who have been on hormone optimization for two or three years going to get tested on the, you know, the, the transcrotal creams and testing at a hundred or 98, you know, at total testosterone and super low free testosterone levels. So like, wait a minute, I'm putting this on every day. Sometimes I'm putting it on twice a day. What's going on. So what is the patient's option? That's, yeah. And it, certainly if you, you're applying a cream every day and your testosterone levels are going down or something like that, that's something to think about. I think with testosterone, what's interesting is that sometimes it's actually a physiological effect. Sometimes we can shut down gonadal production with, with, extra testosterone. So we see that sometimes. So it's not always the pharmacy, but we have like on our site, we have like, here's some three key, three key questions to ask your pharmacy to, to make sure that their quality is on the up and up again, not trying to overload them with a thousand questions. And what, you know, and I think it's very reasonable to say, can you show me your last testosterone test of your cream that you did? You know, like for us, we're probably testing the testosterone cream at least once a month over a course of different ranges and stuff. And uh, we want to make sure that it's, you know, 100% of what the label says. So uh, that's a very reasonable question to ask any compounding pharmacy. And they're not all created equal. I would love to have every compounding pharmacy be absolutely dedicated to quality because it would raise the profile of our entire profession. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. And, of course, we talk about the people who are against compounding or don't understand right. what we do. They're going to have to cherry pick the one guy who's, you know. Yeah. Well, 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 let's segue into that. So you and I both know, you know, I've signed that petition. Who knows how many times? I mean, you know, we, you, you and I also know about, again, one of these compounders that will remain unnamed who got taken down for prescribing peptides. I mean, you know, it's a crazy, let's just call it the wild, wild west, right? You and I know that the peptide peptides themselves are the current and future of medicine. You know, you got bioregulators behind them. But these things are profound, life-altering, life-enhancing, extending life uh, compounds. And here's the FDA, you know, putting the kibosh yeah. on almost all of them. And again, disgracefully, you and I can say this. I mean, they're not going to delete this. I don't, I don't think YouTube is deleting my comments about the FDA yet. They won't let me say anything else. But, uh, you know, it's all for profit, Peter. I mean, this is all about profit. Let's be honest. They're, they don't want non FDA approved drugs that are you know perfectly okay and acceptable with proven use with 20 years of clinical studies you know and, and obviously even more empirical data with doctors working with patients and it's like no you can't you you can't write those off label blah 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 so first question why is the FDA so against compounding pharmacies and of course physicians prescribing peptides to patients when they know that they save lives. Yeah. I mean, to speculate on the FDA's intentions is always tricky ground to be on. Right. My sense is it's not even the profits as much. It's control. The FDA wants control over every medication that's put in front of a patient. I, right. I really believe that's it. And, and they're regulators. So their, their job is to check the boxes and, you know, 
compounding just doesn't fit inside a very nice neat little box that they can they can right. contain and control. And the reason we exist because, is because if we want to get patients well, we cannot be in a box, right? right? So we exist. I mean, there's lots of commercially available medications that help people, and we're not here to say that you shouldn't be on those. We're right. just here to say when that, all that stuff you've tried everything, maybe you need something customized for your specific needs based on the understanding of your physiology and what you've tried and failed. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't, it's just messy. You know, it's medicine. The human <laughs> physiology is messy. Healthcare and getting people to really achieve health is a process that needs like a really supple and sophisticated approach sometimes. And there's just no way to put that into an algorithm or, right. or a confined box. And I just think it just, it's like, it must just boggle their imagination and, and therefore it must be wrong and must be shut down. And I think that's, and it's all done in the guise of patient safety, right? Which is also extremely frustrating because I know my patients. Right. I have relationships with them. The last thing in the world that I want is for them to be harmed. I want them to get better. This is what I've dedicated my career to, but somehow they're coming sweeping in and protecting them from me <laughs> when they don't even know them is really frustrating to me because it's that high-minded interference <laughs> you know? right. So yeah, it's a real big struggle. And, and once that stuff gets taken away, like the peptides, it's very hard to get it back because now you have to create something that's been taken away. So, you know, the, what we're trying to do is make sure more stuff doesn't get taken away and then do everything we can to find some way for Congress or whoever's going to regulate the regulators to say, cool it guys, you're harming people. You yeah. really are. Right. It, that's the bottom line. I mean, that's the reality. Whether you think you are or not, you are. So, no, I mean, it's a good answer. You know, the controllers want more control. I mean, but again, you know, to your point, um, you know, there's a fine line of like harming people and helping people. And clearly, peptides are not harming people. I mean, that's a joke. But you know what? I'll just add my own personal comment to this is like, because I, I see where this is going. And we're already living in this autocratic, technocratic world where they just want like one world government, rulership, ownership, whatever the, you know, it's going to, that where there's a will, there's a way. And we will, meaning guys like you, guys like me talking about it, promoting it, where, however I'm aligned, but there will be access. I, I don't care what they do. Always throughout history, access has been provided when, again, there is established clinical benefit or improvement again to life. And so it will work out. I mean, even if it just ends up being a bunch of research chemical companies that are actually compounding pharmacies, I don't know. I mean, seriously, I don't know, but I definitely know and trust in people like you and the clinical community that they'll work around it. But the other question though, that I have to ask you, because again, this is a very relevant question that at some point in the next two years, there is going to be massive regulation of hormone optimization. They're going to, uh, you know, further restrict or constrict prescribing practices. I mean, look, Peter, you already know this. They're lowering the standard mean deviations on the lab reports from LabCorp and Quest. They're compressing values of high end of testosterone and low end of testosterone because, you know, their excuse, again, the controllers controlling, well, we're, 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 we're conforming and controlling for obesity. And obesity is naturally lowering testosterone, 70% of the adult population, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is that they are restricting doctors' ability to prescribe testosterone. So the question for you is like, what is the reason for Big Pharma doing this now? Well, I think the profit motive is huge. And it's interesting because I've been doing hormones for I'm almost 20 years now. And awesome. back when we, you know, back in the early 2000s, People weren't even recommend. I mean, we, it was like, don't don't touch them. It causes all these problems. Like cancer. No. We're saying, hey, wait a minute. Where's the study that's that's coming from? And here's the study that I'm showing that's some benefit. And here's what we. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I'm saying what I have is pointing in this very clear right. direction. And oh no no. And now it's like all of a sudden, you know. Oh, now that's our thing. <laughs> and you guys are. Out. Wait, what? What happened there? And you know, I. Again, it goes back to like, Crazy, dude. I'm here, I'm here for my, I, I got into healthcare and medicine to help patients. That's, that's my life's mission. Right. And, 
And I didn't realize I was going to hit all these headwinds. I mean, when I got, when I discovered the hormone thing and saw the evidence, I'm like, I've got to start telling people about yeah, this. Right. This evidence is so overwhelming. And, and, you know, it's interesting. One of the things I talk about when I train doctors is like, listen, we've never lived this long. This is why we right. don't have precedent on this stuff. Like we're kind of creating a new paradigm about how to age healthfully and hormones have got to be a part of that picture. Cause once hormone levels drop, kind of the body starts to fall apart for the exactly. for better explanation. Exactly. And so, we're rethinking the entire paradigm about how we're applying things like hormones as we age, et cetera. Little did I know I was gonna be facing all these headwinds. It's like, I thought I was helping people and I am. But again, it's like, wh why is this all coming, you know, coming back at me? Why am I the one having to fight for, you know, for these you know, basic you know, health you know, outcomes that, that I'm seeing every day in my practice? So it is an interesting place to be. And I, I'm just very optimistic that if you, if you keep that, for me, if I keep that, that mindset, like I'm really here to do the right thing. I'm going to find a way to make that happen because at the end of the day, reality is reality. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be able to show, and this is, this is helping people and it's not harming them. And, you know, if, if you want to do the right thing, you're going to help support me or at least, very least get out of my way. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just going to have to, that's the, I just, that keeps me going. You know, it's just like those headwinds are coming. Never thought it would ever be this contentious to do basic healthy aging medicine. Right. Uh, that's the reality we live in. And I think what's we'll, we'll be patient and get through this um, because it's the right thing. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see and talk to you soon. So, I, so I'm with you, man. Like I, I always turn it the wrong way because I've been changing this, but like, you know, I'm not the hormones guy anymore now. I'm raise your vibration guy, right? So it's all about consciousness for me. So I say we're creating the new earth slash the golden age and so along that line of thinking, it's people like us, and there are millions more of us that have to go with that mindset that the light will find a way to shine on. And the light is obviously representing, you know, age management or anti-aging or whatever you want to call it, medicine and life extension medicine, because you're right. I mean, we are living longer, but you know, are we living longer and we living stronger? That's the question that you have to ask. And guys like you and I teach people and educate people on how to do both. You know, modern medicine, sick care, allopathic illness medicine, they want to keep you alive on their pills and their machines. And you're basically just like a, a rotting flesh puppet at the age of 70. You know, I'm dealing with this in my own personal life right now with family, but it's like, you know, is, is it about living longer or is it about living stronger? Right. So that's, and that's where you come in. That's where guys like I talk about every day, but I'm with you, man. L let me ask you um, about the bias, though, against compounding pharmacies. And, and let me give you a really interesting thing to comment on. Um, it's my experience, and I know you know this, there are a lot of compounding pharmacies right now out there really skirting getting in trouble, right? Like every day they're prescribing shit that the FDA has already said, like, don't do that. You know, we all know, you know, who these people are. We have friends that are patients, you know, hey man, you know, you can get so-and-so from them. You know, what is the risk of those people creating bigger problems for people like you? Oh, it's huge. I, I mean, I, I, I'm still paying for the sins of people that I didn't, don't even know who've literally harmed yeah. people and, and killed people. Uh, in, in ways that I would never even be a possibility out of my pharmacy. And yet we all get right. lumped together. And now I have to explain to right. the world why I'm right. not like those guys. So it's really important for our, our industry to not allow that to happen in which, whatever way we can. And for all, you know, it, it is frustrating to have to play by the rules, um, it, but we kind of have to, if we want to continue to do what we do, and then we'll advocate for better rules along the way. But yeah, just skirting things or, you know, doing stuff out the back door is really a dead end for our entire industry not to mention for that business, because they will, you know, it will come to an end for them at some point. So, well, I mean, look, it's yeah. mind blowing. And, and again, I want to stay here. You know, I just came back from A4M 
And, uh, you know, before that, another medical conference. And I'm looking around the room and the whole expo <laughs> is compounders. And they're advertising at the expo peptides and certain other things that I won't mention that are absolutely <laughs> limits. And it's like, the dude. Wants, <laughs> you know, like if the FDA wants to figure out who to go visit, you know, just go to an A4M conference, I guess. I mean, that's pretty risky. So same. I mean, it, but it's not just them. I mean, you know, it's all of the medical conferences. It's like all of the compounders are the ones making enough money to pay for booths. But yet then they come and then they're like showing you openly that, hey, we write scripts for this. And you're like, uh, dude, like, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, dude, the whole industry to me in the last year and a half since so-and-so went down, it's just become totally like not corrupt because obviously they have the intentions of, of not harming their customers and helping them. And I think, again, by and large, the majority of them are. I, I don't think this is a harm thing. But again, they're prescribing meds that are not legally according to the FDA, able to be prescribed. And so it's like, what are you doing for the industry as a whole if this is what you want to do to make a couple of extra dollars? No, they're, they're harming it, no question. And, and then, and then, it, and then it, it, we get painted by a very broad brush, right? And we usually get painted by the worst <laughs> actor in our industry. And it's not re really truly representative of us. And I, I know thousands of pharmacies, hundreds and, you know, at least hundreds, but probably thousands that do do the right thing and do play by the rules. And they're, out, and they're out there and they care about quality and they care about playing by the rules. So it's unfortunate that that kind of gets to be the, you know, the poster child to the people who want to have a negative impression about what we do. And it's, you yeah. know, it's interesting because I bring doctor, you know, doctors, I work, I try to turn doctors around about compounding because I hear this all the time, obviously. And as soon as they walk into the lab, their minds to change. When right. they talk to me, I'm UCSF graduate. I have a medical degree in pharmacy. I'm legit. I'm evidence-based. Right. Oh, this isn't wacky Wild West stuff. Oh, right. this lab looks like a professional lab. Like everyone's gowned up. You know, everything's clean. You know, oh, this is totally different than what I thought it was. But I have to have that that visual <laughs> almost to like show that, yeah, what you think it is isn't really what it is with us. So it's funny how you use that term. It's so overused and overplayed now, evidence-based. In truth, evidence-based is, is the only thing that matters. But let's be honest, like how many doctors, and again, obviously I specialize in hormone optimization and peptides, but like when I start talking to some of the people that I talk about, like, you know, I ask like basic questions, like how they're doing their things. I mean, dude, ain't very few clinicians doing anything evidence-based. And again, without disparaging them, we both know, bro, they got to pay their mortgages, their kids' college tuitions, their car payments, the second house payment, the vacation every year. I mean, everybody's got bills and issues. And so I understand that they're trying to make money. At the end of the day, it's a business, right? But I'm, I'm telling you, man, there are not enough, unfortunately, doctors in the United States that are still like optimizing people's health from a hormone and peptide standpoint based on the evidence, okay? They're trying to make money. Yeah. Evidence space gets so much lip service and so little actual activity. I mean, honestly, doctors as a group, and there's outliers, of course, it's a lot about seeing what the other doctors are doing. Exactly. It's, it's protecting yourself by staying inside the herd. So right. what's what's much more important to many doctors, and again, I don't want to you know, implicate everybody, is right. what's if I don't want to be the guy who's sticking my neck out. If if everyone's doing this, even if it's just crazy and wrong at least i'm not going to be the guy that the board of medicine is going to come visit and that's unfortunately kind of the reality for a lot of doctors it is. so we're trying to slowly nudge them you know like we're not saying you're going to go crazy and become some sort of radical you know outside the norm guy but there's a couple things you might want to review here like this this article here that shows the hormones are the safety profile of hormones are actually quite good and that what you were taught in medical school actually isn't grounded <laughs> Is the opposite. And Peter, I, I swear to you, because you just said it, right? 20 years ago, right? Like, so I started my own journey in 1999. And then I wrote my book, you know, 10 years ago or eight years ago. I can't even remember now. But, you know, you said it best. Like, my guess is that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, hormones will be the standard operating procedure right? Like you will still have sick care. 
you'll have like, you know, the allopathic for the people that say, well, my copay's $30. But the majority of people in our society will be into wellness, functional health, again, living longer and stronger. And all of them, the first line of defense will be optimizing the hormones. So you're right. I mean, question. exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's laughable that we still have to defend this. And yet the guys that are out there that have some modicum of awareness about, you know, optimizing their hormones, it's like, dudes, get with the program, right? Like stop having people. And you know who I'm talking about, you know, all the pharmaceutical reps coming into their office, giving them this, giving them that, giving them the, and then they prescribe based on like what they got in their office or what they were told in the last week. It's like, Create a basis of how you, how, how you practice your medicine and stop allowing, you know, these outside external influences and, and forces really to influence how you prescribe. But you're right. I mean, Peter, there isn't a single wellness or functional health doctor in, on the planet, you know, and I will say outside of you know, Canada and the United States, because as you know, it's medieval in Europe, right? For the most part, but like the ones that are aware it's literally their differential diagnosis is like, okay, let's look at their nutrition and then let's look at their hormones. Right. What, like, like what is their body fat and inflammatory markers? And then let's get into their hormones. I mean, this is standard operating procedure now. So again, Even just a, a moment of reflection on the physiology of hormones and the idea that our patients are going to want to live to be 90. Exactly. I would say like my kids like say they want to live to be hundred and I'm thinking, yeah, you probably can, you know, like if you're of growing course. up now, and just a minute of reflection on that, knowing the trajectory of people's hormones, women's hormones drop off a cliff around 45 yep. to 55. Men's hormones yep. are like a downward slope from the age of 28, which yep. intended to cross a critical threshold. You know, all this, you know, around, you know, 55 to 65. Sure. How the heck are you going to do that with hormone deficiency? It just, the body isn't designed to operate <laughs> with hormone deficiency. So just that little piece of like kind of common sense, physiologic knowledge answers the question right there. And I think we're getting there. I will say, you know, yeah. I've been doing it for 20 years. I used to call OBGYNs and say, hey, we do hormones. Like, oh, that's voodoo. You know, hang up the phone. <laughs> that's <on>. horrible. <laughs> well, I like hormones, but I don't do compounded hormones. And I think, well, I'm going to take that as progress right. because it'll be up on me. But like you said, you know, everything, everything's heading in that direction. That's the trajectory we're seeing. It's right. very slow and we're going to have a generation that's going to suffer because of this hey guys and gals what's going on if you're looking to use peptides make sure you go to my number one source limitless life nootropics for healing with bpc 157 and tb 500 or fat loss with ipamorelin cgc 1295 and aod 9604 to immunity with ta1 thymus and alpha one limitless labs a huge selection Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. So you're right. Our generation, you know, we're basically Gen X people. But our generation is the beginning. We are the initiates. Because like our parents and the baby boomers and even the ones that are still, whatever, the above the boomers that are still around, the World War II gen, I forget, I forget what they were called, but... Dude, those people don't do this. I mean, let's be honest. They're fear-based. This is bad. You know, they came up in a world where testosterone was the devil. You know, so, I mean, I mean, because, like, look, I've had, my dad is a highly intelligent guy at 76, right? Like, very successful, accomplished, multimillionaire, retired. He wouldn't go down the hormone optimization pathway if his life depended yeah. on it. And I know you've had those type of conversations, too. And, oh, and he desperately, desperately could revolutionize his life, right? And his son is like this leading world expert. It doesn't matter. You know how it is with our parents. But you're right. Like we are the, the initiates. We are the ones that will shepherd the rest of the world, you know, into this new phase of medicine. Again, I, I like to call it optimization, right? Because that's really what it is. We're optimizing all the pathways, right? right? But, but, but this is where it's going. And again, people like you who own the pharmacies that will literally give the drugs slash prescribe the drugs, whatever, like, you know, make them available to the public is, is critical. I mean, that's why you're on this podcast. I, I rarely even talk to people in this field anymore. I'm so bored of it. I, I want to talk about consciousness, right, but it's like, right. it, I mean, you know, but you're a, a conduit, you know, a very important conduit because it really is true. I mean, I always tell people like, if you're not physically healthy, Okay. 
you don't have a, even a thought process about improving your consciousness, about improving the quality of planet Earth, right? Because you're like in survival. You're like moment to moment, like, oh my God, my back, or I can't <laughs> stay. Right. Yeah, so, I yeah. mean, like, yeah, you got to get your physical health optimized. And that's great. I've been playing that game for a long time, but now I want to go deeper. And so it's like you prescribe testosterone, you prescribe peptides, you prescribe thyroid medications, you know, all these things that optimize the symphony of hormones. And this is how you extend life. Yeah. Yeah. And it, we say this, our opinion, you know, we don't, we don't expect them to live to be thinking about their health. We expect them exactly. to be healthy so that they can that's exactly do right. in life and, you know, do, you know, feel so good that they actually feel that, that sense of uh, contribution and all the things that, you know, you're talking about. And so that's, it's the foundation of all that. And, and we're trying to get people to that point. And, you know, it's interesting too, because when we finally get people feeling well, we're some of the first people who actually ask them, that's right. how are you feeling? Like, well, we got your blood pressure good. You know, we got this marker good, but you still feel like crap. You know, like, I don't think that's an outcome. Right. That's awesome. So one last point. Uh, the importance of custom tailoring like hormone treatments instead of using a one size fits all approach. Now I love that because again, every individual patient is, is unique. Everyone is different. You cannot cookie cutter. I mean, I see all these, I call them windmill clinics, you know, out there that are you know, attempting to prescribe hormones, like jamming multiple medications <laughs> into capsules and like injectables. And it's like, dude, like, it doesn't work like that. But again, they're trying to make money and they're also trying to like, you know, cost per month for every person that comes into their clinic because they're competing with like five other windmill clinics in San Francisco or LA or Miami or San Diego or whatever it is. So it's like, I get it. They're trying to make money, but it doesn't work like that. But your thoughts. It doesn't work. And we live in like the startup capital of the world here in Silicon Valley. Oh, now. you see it all. Everybody and their grandma's tried to start up a functional medicine uh, algorithm or <laughs> anything. And I've actually talked to some people, some very good doctors who've been involved in some of these startups as advisors and things like that. And we've kind of all come to the conclusion, you know, you need that individual patient to patient right. conversation with a skilled provider because for all the reasons you said. And health is complicated. Like you said, there's a spiritual and physical element yep. to it. There's just lots of things that need to be unpacked for each individual. And that's where we come in. You know, if it's a commercial product that's going to get you better, whether you need something really boutique that has all the excipients that are going to harm you out of this picture, we can come in with that if we can deliver it in a different way. And a lot of it's just support and saying, hey, you know, we actually have some tools that you haven't been aware of. And our goal is to make you feel better. Like Exactly. That. And so that's a kind of an eye opener for a lot of people, but we, we haven't found a way, at least in Silicon Valley to like create the, you know, scalable, <laughs> it's still, it's still boutique one-on-one -on -one thing. And I, you know, I kind of think it always is going to be, we'll see, but it is Peter. It absolutely is. And I will add a footnote to that. Uh, let me put your socials up here real quick. Uh, but um, and also, I know you want to talk about um, what was the last one. Oh well, yeah, uh, com com if yeah compounding.com. I'll put that up in a second. You can get the last okay. word. Yeah, you can get the last word on that. But uh, dude, all of these guys come to me. You know, they want me to be on the board. They want me to advise. And every single time I tell them the same thing, I'm like, look, machine learning and big data is not going to optimize an individual's hormones. It's never going to happen. I don't give a shit how many predictable algorithms you guys create it's not going to work but yet they're still out there they're still doing it they're still trying to force all of this data into some sort of like usable algorithm for individual patients i mean i can name them and i won't you know some of these guys do have me on their board you know i'm like sure i'm an advisor or whatever but i mean i'm laughing because i know it's not going to work in the long run you are right it is an individual patient it is care, it is concern by the clinician, by the pharmacist to understand, you know, their health and behaviors and habits to get them to where they want to be. Okay. I'm going to post why you want people to go visit compounding.com. This is a really cool site that was put together just to help um, gather testimonials about how compounded hormones have, have helped people because we are concerned that somewhere down the road, the FDA or other regulators are gonna take away our ability to do this, which will harm people, no question. And so we wanna have a lot of evidence to show people like, hey, this really matters to people and this is why it has to be compounded and this is why it's made a difference in my life. So if 
anyone in your audience wants to share that, it would be really helpful to us to just have more of that uh, data to you know share. And the stories are really powerful, and uh, they they do touch people and help change minds. So, just wanted to put that out there for sure. Awesome, Peter. Well, I really truly appreciate you coming on the show today. Again, a very good podcast. We talked awesome. about a lot of really important things. So for all of you guys out there watching the Jay Campbell podcast, again, always support the amazing individuals that come on. Go to uh, Peter's Facebook page, which is facebook.com, Koshlin Farm on social media, a4pc.org. And on Instagram, it's again, Koshlin Farm. So you guys can find it. And of course, visit compounding.com and leave your testimonials. And I will just say as an impassioned person uh, who's a huge proponent and of course, user and user of uh, compounding, um, it's critically important for you guys to go to compounding.com and leave your testimonials because Peter's right, man. If the compounders go away, it's going to get a lot worse than it already is. If it is in fact getting worse, but both him and I are believers that the light will find a way we will bring in the golden age and the new earth no matter what. So I'll just end this podcast by saying, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.